It seems like deadly viruses are popping up by the dozens these days, but thankfully science and medicine is on the defense. As always, we've got you covered with the best tips to keep your family healthy and safe. Tina standing by with an expert. Tina. With over 38 states affected and counting, there's a new respiratory virus, EVD-68, sending kids and now adults to the hospital. Here to offer ways to protect your family with this and other health concern is registered nurse and National Chief Nursing Officer for Medline Industries, Marty Moore. Welcome, Marty. Good morning. And Marty, let's start out with kind of getting a, a little bit of background on EVD-68. Sure, so um, EVD-68 is a virus and, and it's out of a family that's been around since the 60s. Um, and so it's not, a, it's not a new virus to us, but it's certainly making self well known. And so uh, you're saying it's been around for a long time. So why now is it making such headlines and everybody is kind of on alert at this time? You know, I think what's happening is, is that um, more and more children are being impacted by it, and it's also severity of the illnesses that they're exhibiting associated with the virus. Um, that's causing uh, the concern that I think most parents have about what does this virus mean to us. And now the, the symptoms, that's what every parent wants to know. What am I looking for? How do I differentiate between this and maybe the common flu or cold or, or asthma? Yeah, so um, when I talk with parents, what I really try to do is, is I really try to help them. Don't try to figure out if this is a cold or is, is this EVD-68. Look at the symptoms. Know your child. Know what their health history is. And, and I really encourage them, use a calendar um, and write down the first time the child says, you know, I'm not feeling good and what the symptoms were. That helps the health care providers. That helps us to be able to um, understand kind of what the course is. Um, and then the other thing that parents have to know about is, is if they have children that have asthma, um, whether it's diagnosed or they're suspicious about it, um, that puts that child more at risk just because of they already have kind of this inflammation that's going on within the respiratory system and, and their immune system um, is already kind of working a little bit harder. And so it's really important for them to take that into consideration. Symptoms they want to think about are shortness of breath, inspiratory, expiratory wheezing, fever. We are seeing muscle weakness with this virus, um, and so it's kind of those things you want to think about and look at, but you want to work really closely with your health care provider, know the story, share the history. And Marty, you were talking about health care providers and taking information into them, like writing things down. What are health care providers doing once we come in and let them know that we think this may be uh, one of those cases? Yeah, so when you come in and share and say, you know, your, your concern and the child has, has, you know, the shortness of breath that we're certainly seeing, you're going to see more things like this MedNeb uh, that we utilize. Uh, you can utilize this within the home setting. Um, parents, if children have asthma, need to bring in their asthma action plan, what they have been doing, how have they been responding to their nebulizer treatments. If they haven't been, that's another thing they need to share. And it's kind of a, a red flag to them the same way, but this isn't working like it should. Um, the other thing that hospitals do is, is of course, they're going to be helping to open up those airways. They're not going to use antibiotics unless there's a secondary bacterial infection because this is a virus. It doesn't respond to antibiotics. And sometimes I think parents think that their children need that. And in truth, you're going to support the symptoms. Here's what else that hospitals are doing that parents can do. The goal is prevention. So you want to do good hand washing, soap and water. Nobody I've met yet is a master at hand washing. And yet, if you think about the fact that viruses are great travelers, here's their mode of transportation. It's our hands. And so great hand washing, singing the happy birthday or the ABC song. Additionally, you want to use your sanitizer, uh, your alcohol sanitizer. You want to interrupt the travel plans again. You want to use disinfectants. This is microkill. It's fantastic. Most importantly, you want to educate yourself. Medline.com has some great information for you to go to to learn about this virus, but also learn what else can you be doing. Marty, those are great ideas on how to protect ourselves and, of course, what to do if we think that, uh, you know, somebody in our family is affected. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for all of those tips. And, of course, like you said, we can get more information at that website. Marty, thank you again.